Hello and welcome to the IFSCC webinar series. This is a uh, webinar number five. And today's speaker, Dr. Edith Flair, is she obtained her PhD from the University of Claremont Ferrand in 1997. She has worked in major French universities, uh, Lyon, Claremont, uh, Orleans, Paris, and uh, Saclay. And from 2006 to 2018, she was a full professor and co-director of a research laboratory at Orleans, Paris Saclay. Uh, her research focused uh, on nutrition, health, and the use of psychophysiological approach. Currently, she is the scientific director of the Green Tech Group, including four companies BioVitus, Green Tech, Green Seas, and Maprique. Uh, in this group, she develops a uh, thema about biology, neuroendocrinology, and psychophysiology, nutrition, health, and microbiota. She is the author or co-author of more than 135 contributions to scientific international journals and five book chapters. I know how much work book chapters are, so congratulations on that. Recently, she was nominated for the Women in Tech International Award that recognizes people around the world who innovate, inspire, and transform technology. I'm very excited about this. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, now I'm going to pass it off to you. Let's uh, get the slide started and we can start the presentation. Uh, you can take it away. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm very happy to present you uh, this webinar entitled The Exposome Impact on Air, Skin and uh, Aging Process. So, um, over the last decade, the human exposome, or simply the exposome, has emerged as a novel research paradigm in uh, epidemiology, biomedical, and environmental health sciences. Uh, in cosmetics, there is a growing body of literature attempting to gain an understanding of the exposome of human skin and its contribution to the aging process. In this webinar, after defining this concept, I will show you the importance of taking it into account in cosmetic. A focus for natural solutions derived from marine and plants uh, to protect the skin and air will be present. The term exposome was first introduced in 1905 by Wilt, who described is a totality of exposure to which an individual is uh, subjected from conception to this. A more defined definition was provided in 1940 by Miller and Jones, who proposed that the exposome should be considered as a cumulative measure of environmental influences and the subsequent associated bio biological responses of an individual throughout their life. More precisely, uh, three broad exposome domains, often overlapping with each other, are proposed to classify environmental exposures within the exposome. These domains are as follows. The general external, wider influential factors such as social capital, urban, rural, environmental, and climate. The specific external, inducing chemical contaminants, in function urgents, occupation, and lifestyles. The internal exposome includes internal chemical environmental, environments determined by internal processes like metabolic or inflammatory as assessed through evaluation of proteins, lipid mediators, xenobiotics, and their metabolites through and ochromic tubes. The internal exposome is specific to each subject because it depends on each physiology, body morphology, health status, and the genome among others. Growing attention is currently being paid to the role of the totality of environmental exposures and their endogenous response as it, it is inputted, excuse me, across the lifespan in shaping disease risk and diseases development. It should be noted that environment tal exposures contribute to an estimated 17 to 19 percent of disease risk. The body of global literature of the exposome has been growing in the past year, yet with remarkable nuances given the embryonic nature of the concept. 
numerous reviews and commentaries, perspectives on the human exposome and its utility exist, either favoring or challenging its implementation. Currently, exposome studies focus on either a health outcome, such as cancer, diabetes, gastrointestinal diseases, kidney stones, Parkinson's disease, reproductive health, or on various exposome outcomes metrics used in one or more domains of the exposome. The effects of exposome on the skin or on the air have not received the same attention. Some articles have published on exposome studies related to the skin. Among them, Kutman proposed that environmental factors involved in the skin aging exposome fall into six main categories. Sun radiation, air pollution, tobacco smoke, nutrition, several less well studied factors such as stress and sleep deprivation, and cosmetic products. As you know, ultraviolet solar radiation and air pollution have been identified as aggressors to the human skin surface and deeper skin tissues. In fact, beyond the carcinogenic effects of UV air, sun exposure is also responsible for skin aging and air damage. More recently, epidemiological and mechanistic studies suggest that the air pollution can also affect skin integrity and in combination with UV exposure can result in aggravated effect to skin health since some pollutants are photoreactive and phototoxic. Concerning pollution, a high diversity of physical or chemical compounds can be classified as pollutant agents. For example, particulate matters of different sizes and with different chemical components and some gases such as ozone and nitrogen and sulfur oxidized. Particulate matter 2.5 are frequently associated with polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons that can generate an oxidative stress when exposed to UVA radiation. Concerning cosmetic, cosmetic product use have been increasing in recent years, as you know. Cosmetics are made to be, to be embellished, beautify, and improve skin appearance. They are part of the exposome, but differ from previously mentioned environmental factors because they are used voluntarily to reduce or prevent skin aging. Indeed, several ingredients have demonstrated their ability to prevent or correct aging sin in randomized controlled trials. By definition, cosmetic use need to be safe. The safety approach can be implemented in four stages, including, for example, toxicological and clinical thema. It should be noted that so-called traditional cosmetics or cosmetics made without such strict rules can be harmful to human skin and just contribute in a negative uh, two way to the skin exposure. Generally speaking, exposome, whatever their origins, exerts a harmful effect on the skin by increasing oxidative stress. The disturbance in redox homeostasis could lead to skin alteration, including diseases from cancer, neurodegenerative diseases through inflammation and epigenetic modifications. Endogenous defense mechanisms are activated in order to fight the deleterious effects of all pollutants on skin. More precisely, uh, atmospheric, atmospheric pollution combined with ozone or UV rays disrupts the existing balance between production and elimination of reactive oxygen species named WOS and induce inflammatory response. WOS activates the MAP kinase signaling pathways, including ERK1, ERK2, junk, and P38 MAP kinase. And then the activated MAP kinase induces various transcription factors, such as NF-kappa-B and activer protein 1, named RP1. As a result of translocation on the activated transcription factors, inflammatory cytokines and MMPs are synthesized. TNF-alpha, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, and interleukin-1 
8, for example, are closely related with inflammatory skin diseases and skin aging. And various MMPs are also produced and activated by wash generation. For example, MMP1, which is well known as collagenase, MMP3, MMP2, and MMP9, all induce collagen degradation. In addition, reactive oxygen spaces impair the skin repair DNA system, accumulating DNA damage and further resulting the, in the acceleration of the skin aging process. Besides signaling pathways illustrating in the previous slide, polycyclic aromatic pollutants and tryptophan photoproduct generated by UV irradiation bind to and activate a real hydrocarbon receptor named RHR. The activated a real hydrocarbon receptors trans translocates from the cytoplasm into the nucleus, binding to its specific DNA recognition site and upregulates the transcription of responsive genes such as Citrochrome P14 family one, member E1, CP1, E1, this last protein being a member of a multi-gene family of xenobiotic metabolosi enzymes. The activity of the genes can be deleterious because it generates mutagenic metabolites and reactive oxygen species. This dia shows the defense mechanism of nuclear factor named NRF2, which is activated in order to fight the deleterious effect of all pollutants on skin. It is able to help, elim to help elimination and inactivate toxic agents. NRF2 pathway in skin is of high importance, playing a role in skin homeostasis and skin renovation. In fact, NRF2 regulates not only a variety of antioxidant enzymes, such as uh, thyrodoxin, for example, or m oxygen as one, but also several phase one and phase two drug metabolizing enzymes, for example, glutathione S transferase. Phase two protective enzymes are responsible for the antioxidant response, xenobiotic disposition, inflammatory response, metabolic programming cell proliferation and survival through the antioxidant response elements named ARE in this dia. Activity of NRF2 is also regulated by various mechanisms. For example, under homostatic conditions, RNF2 is generally localized in cytoplasm where it is secreted by its inhibitor KIP1. In response to reactive oxygen species, KIP1 acts as a modulator sensor and undergoes chemical modifications in a series of reactive stidine residues, allowing the release of NRF2, which escapes from degradation and translocates to the nucleus, where it recruits the small MEF protein and binds to the antioxidant response elements, named ER. E, uh, in the slide, thus activate several genes coding phase 2, detoxification enzymes, and antioxidants. Additionally, NRF2 is stabilized by the Parkinson associated protein named DG1, a multifunctional protein expressed in almost all tissues involved in various physiological processes, such as transcriptional regulation, antioxidative stress reaction mitochondrial regulation, and signal transduction. More precisely, DG1 promotes NRF2 binding to antioxidant response elements, and in addition to directly regulating some antioxidant gene expression, it protects mitochondria by directly maintaining mitochondrial complex 1 activity and translocating into mitochondria as an, as an antioxidant. Besides the cascade of inflammation and, and uh, ROS uh, induced by exposome, this figure illustrates uh, a proposed biological cascade in which internal and external exposures affect the chromosomes, potentially disrupting the telomerase telomere balance 
and resulting in adverse health outcomes, inducing an acceleration of aging process. Telomeres are non-coding system of DNA at the end of chromosomes, which prevents the loss of genetic material and protects the chromosomes from fuzzing together during cell division. Depending on the cell type, cell division may occur up to 50 times before cell cycle checkpoints activate genetic programs of replic replicative senescence. When telomeres become shortened to a critical length that can compromise the genomic stability, chromosome and activate DNA damage response pathways that induce apoptosis. However, disruption of the sheltering proteins and total loss of telomeric DNA can promote the formation of end-to-end -end of chromosome fusions, genetic mutation, neoplastic transformation, and alter gene expression. Such telomere is a critical variable in aging as well as susceptibility to disease. The telomer sequence can be elongated by telomerase as well as through non-telomerase dependent processes through alternative lengthening of telomeres. So, um, after this uh, definition and this mechanism, uh, I will speak about uh, skin and about the repercussion of uh, exposome to skin. And as you know, exposome induces not only with aging, Hello, looks like we're having a slight technical Hello? error here. Yes, it's okay. Uh, Do you have uh, if you could just refresh your screen. Ah, uh, with um, screen. Uh, what, how do I do? Also, and next, it's okay? Okay, that, that works good. And if you want to turn your camera on. My camera. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the bottom left corner, the circle. Not, not, not here, 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 ups. Ah, there you go. It's okay. okay. Oh. Yeah, so okay. <laughs> so, um, I continue. So, um, exposome and use is not only with aging, and using wrinkle formation, hyperpigmentation, uh, sunburning, oxidative stress, pigment spots, but also sensitive and reactive skin, acne, and atopic dermatitis. Now, I will present some natural solutions from algae and plants to protect the skin from these effects. An active ingredient dedicated to sensitive and reactive skin aggressed by exposome was developed. It consists of sulfated oligosaccharides obtained by modification according to biotechnological process of a polysaccharide isolated from the red algae Alimenia duveli. This active ingredient finds discomfort and itching and using by exposure. In fact, uh, it has an immediate soothing effect. It can also decrease erythrosis. It can also prevent premature aging induced by exposure. And it is very important. It maintains bacterial diversity and fights against specific bacteria involved in wellness. A possible approach to attack reactive oxygen species mediated disorder influenced by exposome for both preventive and treatment means is based on the use of substances which can be found in plants as a secondary metabolites. Cishandroatinases is a traditional Chinese herbal medicine that has been used for the treatments in Asia for thousands of years. Cishandro lignans, such as cishandrine, cishandrine A, Desoxychandrin and cishandrin are the major constituents of cishandratinides, and more than 15 of them have been isolated to now. Some active ingredients can be proposed, which act as a, power, uh, as a powerful, excuse me, global anti-pollution. For example, this ingredient protects at molecular level by activating genes implicated in redox balance detoxification, and skin barrier integrity. Secondly, 
He protects at cellular level by limiting the induction of the inflammation and detoxification pathways and by modulating the cellular defenses and maintaining the redox balance. It also protects at tissular level by strengthening the cutaneous barrier and maintaining the dermis integrity, such limiting the penetration of pollutants. And finally, it protects at organ level from pollution aggression after only seven days of treatment since it equilibrates skin barrier homeostasis, increases microcirculation, allows skin to preserve the glowing completion of the skin. This ingredient also protects from prolonged gene pollution aggression since it improves hydration, protects skin homogeneity, increases skin radiance and luminosity, and attenuates skin spot intensity after only 21 days of pollution exposures. You have to know that plant-derived phenyl, phenyl propanoid compose the largest group of secondary metabolites produced by higher plants, mainly for the protection against biotic or abiotic stresses, such as wooding, UV evaluation, and numerous studies have been focusing on the molecular mechanism of biological activity of natural phenyl propanoids. This mechanism includes the suppression of both the production of interleukin 1-beta and the activation of NF-kappa-B, the activation of k 3 the inhibition of the transcriptional activity of the COX-2 genes. Based on this data, the photoprotective effect of active phenylpropanoid extract, such as verbacoside from Budlea officinalis, was evaluated. Results shows that this extract has a 316 action to protection from exposure. In fact, under UV exposure, it stimulates elastin production, preserving extracellular matrix and reduced melanin production, preventing hyperpigmentation. Under infrared radiation, this active by inhibiting MMP1 release, preserves extracellular matrix and prevents its premature degradation and use. It reduces pro-inflammatory mediators and this inhibition is persistent during time. Finally, under blue light exposure, this active protects from oxidative stress and inflammation and significantly increases decorin expression. It also protects from blue light and use in essence. An in vivo study was also realized and uh, this active maintains skin color and radiance by preventing a white tema UV induced and post inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Oh, there is a problem in this dia. This dia is not good. You heard me? Yes, I, I can hear you. Uh, There's a... this, uh, this, this slide is not very good. It's not very good. So uh, it's not important. Okay. Uh, spirits, spirits, we can we can try again. No, and that no. Uh, so no, it doesn't matter. I okay. um, I will I will. Um, it is important uh, to 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 do a summarize. So uh, to summarize uh, this first part, uh, it is uh, important to uh, to remain that uh, exposome is a concept. Uh, important to take into account in cosmetic. And uh, in fact, uh, as I said, uh, on skin, it induces a cascade of pro-inflammatory and pro-oxidant responses. And it also induces a skin dysbiosis and dehydration and matrix degradation. And today, the main solution uh, is a systemic solution acting through the activation of NRF2 transcriptional factor and uh, activation also of DG1 a key antioxidant proteins and uh, acting also on barrier uh, and tight junction proteins. Moreover, targeting some specific species is very important to rebalance the skin microbiota. So, um, after uh, this uh, first part, and uh, we'll now speak uh, about uh, air. Uh, why hair? Because the physical properties of air can uh, also be impacted by internal and uh, environmental exposures ranging for chemical stressors to weather. 
and you know that air is more than a collection of fibers of the human head. It is something strongly associated with one's self-image. To many, it describes who they are and how they want to be perceived by others. This, uh, this is why hair loss and excessive hair breakage can be uh, so stressful to people. Uh, through our times, and uh, this year uh, reflecting uh, what, um, what uh, I will say, that, uh, hair has been regarded as a symbol of beauty. The hair has a great importance in the, represent in the representation of the self-esteem and the human being, bringing information about the personality of which one. Moreover, maintaining the hair fiber architecture is essential to always have good strength as well as shine and softness. However, every day, air is exposed to exposome, leading to external and internal damages of the hair shaft and impacting, therefore, its beauty. More precisely, the hair cuticle is subject day-to-day -day stimuli, such as air washing, chemical treatments, such as air dyeing or permanent wave treatments, and hot air drying and brushing. External Impacts, including sun exposure, pollution, temperature, relative humidity, can also compromise air growing and texture of the fiber. Similar to the rest of the skin, the hair is also exposed to, no to noxious environmental factors. While ultra, uh, ultraviolet radiation and smoking are well appreciated as major factors contributing to the extracting aging of the skin, their effect on the condition of hair have only literally attracted the attention of the medical community. The two most important chronic effects of UV hair on the skin and bald scalp are photocarcinogenesis and solar elastosis. However, the effect of UV hair on hair have largely been ignored. As a consequence of increased leisure time and the growing popularity of outdoor activities and holidays in the sun, the awareness of sun protection of the skin has become important and should also apply to the hair. Increasing public awareness of the association between smoking and hair loss seems to offer a very good opportunity for the prevention or cessation of smoking since the appearance of air plays an important role in the overall physical appearance and self-perception of people. Finally, the quantity and quality of the hair are closely related to the nutritional state of an individual. Normally supply, uptake and transport of proteins, calories, trace elements and vitamins are of fundamental importance in tissues with high biosynthetic activity, such as the hair follicles. In instances of protein and calorie malnutrition, as well as essential amino acids and vitamin deficiencies, hair growth and pigmentation may be impaired. Amino acids, vitamins, and or trace elements may further promote hair growth. Besides protein and vitamin deficiencies, high fat diet is believed to reduce the level of sex hormone binding globulin, resulting in higher dihydrotestosterone uh, conversion rates at the hair follicle level, aggravating some disease such as alopecia. Such nutrition, which is a part of the concept of the exposome, plays a key role in the aging of the hair and associated diseases such as alopecia. The cuticle layer surrounding the cortex which protects the hair from environmental and, and chemical damage, is the most vulnerable to UV-induced damage due to its external location. Indeed, the amino acids of the cuticles are most activated by UV radiation than the amino acid for the cortex because the outer layers of the fiber receive higher intensity of radiation. Among the various amino acids that constitute keratin, cysteine, sulfur-containing amino acid, and wing amino acid and tryptophan, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and histidine are particularly sensitive. Besides direct integration between air components and UV radiation, 
the production of reactive oxygen species such as superoxide and hydroxide is also involved in air photodegradation. Primary photo Hello, Edith, it looks like you have uh, dropped off. Uh, so uh, if you could refresh your uh, uh, file. Meanwhile, uh, we'll just wait here. Uh, sorry about the technical uh, issues here. Uh, just to let you know, uh, the, the quality of what you are seeing is related to uh, the quality of uh, the internet connection that you have. And it looks like uh, Edith is back on. Hello. Uh, there you are. Uh, you yeah. are. Uh, ah, super. You are. Uh, that's a, okay. Uh, if you want to turn your camera back on, and we can resume. Okay. <laughs> okay. Excuse me for this uh, for all this problem. Uh, so, um, um, I, uh, um, I, I say that uh, primary photo oxidation of uh, residue in proteins, including tryptophan and cysteine leads to build up of free radical. Uh, the photodegradation of cysteine is the most alteration of the amino acid residue of the wall fiber. Uh, in the same time as breakage, the disulfide bonds are oxidized. Uh, oxidation of cysteine disulfide bond produce two moles of cystic acid. According to the acidic character of air increases, the isoelectric point should be subsequently decreased and the hydrophilicity is wise. Oxidation of the amine carbon of polypeptide chains also occurs, producing carbonyl groups, and air protein carbonylation is also a harmful irreversible protein modification and used by oxidative stress. Protein carbonylation is, is induced either by the direct impact of reactive oxygen spaces or by reactions with secondary products of oxidative stress, such as reactive aldehyde produced by lipid peroxidation, forming adducts with side chains of cysteine, histidine, and lysine residues. Therefore, protein carbonylation is a reliable biomarker of oxidative stress induced by UV exposure. You have to know also that cuticle cells are covered with the thin li lipid layers, uh, covalently bonded to air proteins. It has been noted that lipids of cell membrane complex of air fibers are degraded by more visible light, but also by UVA and by UVB, helping to explain the weakening of the cell membrane comp complex uh, observed in air exposed to light radiation. It is so that lanoic acid, which is an unsaturated fatty acid, is oxidized due to high oxidant content in air in response to an overexposure to UV. This lipid peroxidation could be the source of highly reactive hydroxyl radical forming cuticle holes and air damage. Um, various studies have identified the sensitive skull syndrome resulting from exposure to increasing level of air pollution, including particular matter, dust, smoke, nickel, lead, and arsenic, ammonia, and polycyclic aromatic uh, hydrocarbons, which shuttle on the scalp and air. Indoor air condition environments because volatile organic compounds released for various sources to settle on the scalp. The pollutants migrate into the dermis, transepidermis, and through, our, and through the hair follicle uh, conduits, it leading to oxidative stress and air loss named alopecia. <coughs> Even if the exact etiopathogenesis of growing remains incompletely understood, white hair is predominantly influenced by genetics, cigarette smoking, UV radiation, such by exposure. So uh, it is so important uh, to evaluate if we have some natural solution to uh, reduce the um, deleterious effect of exposure. Mm, yes, so the use of natural antioxidants from plants such as polyphenol 
have been shown to protect air from lipid peroxidation and protein degradation induced by UV exposure. Among natural antioxidants, phenolic compounds such as sugar and gingerol uh, possess high antioxidant activity. For example, a recent study noted the role of sugar on UVB induced oxidative stress and photoaging signaling in human skin cells. Other polyphenols, such as onocule and magnolol, two major components of the genus Magnola, the, are bioactive constituents of the traditional Chinese medicine that have antioxidative properties. The protective effect of magnolol against UVB damage, such as skin photo aging of tumor development, has been demonstrated by several in vivo studies. Onocule also show protective properties against skin tumor development of the transformation of papillomas to carcinomas induced by UV and has the ability to inhibit UV induced suppression of the human system. Besides its beneficial effect against UV damage, onocule was shown to reverse the deleterious effect of pollution on skin cells. An active ingredient situated in this molecule uh, was evaluated and uh, can protect protein structure integrity and also can keep air strong and beautiful. In fact, this active uh, can protect uh, keratin structure, can also maintain tryptophan and uh, cysteine in fiber, and also can so improve uh, the hair strain and hair shine. Several natural molecules have demonstrated interesting properties through their pro-melanogenic activity. For example, flavonoids such as uh, naringenin and flavonoid glycoside such as uh, quercetin glucoside have been shown to stimulate melanogen melanogenesis pathways in melanocytes self models. Resveratrol and terpanoids have also been identified as potential upregulators of melanogenesis process. Among natural terpanoids, the active components picroside 2 and iridoid uh, glycoside as a very interesting candidate to target physiological and process is identified and contributors of the gradual loss of air pigmentation. Indeed, a lot of studies noted that, that picrosid 2 has an anti-apoptotic effect following different cellular injuries by increasing in the anti-apoptotic BCL2 protein. This anti-apoptotic activity has been associated with a wide range of pharmacological effects, including neuroprotective, hepatoprotective, and anti-apoptosis and anti-inflammatory effects. Therefore, uh, the used plant extract containing picrosite 2 uh, could restore air pigmentation by maintaining stem cell reservoir in air follicles and thus the pool of activate melanocytes. Biological evaluation shows that this active ingredient situated in picrosite 2 can restore the pigmentation in the hair and can uh, re regain health and beauty in the hair. And uh, uh, at the same time, uh, self-esteem and positive emotion are found again after the treatment of this, uh, with this molecule. In fact, this active can reduce oxidative stress in air follicle cells and can increase antioxidant, antioxidative genes expression in melanocytes and also increase melan melanin synthesis. So, the scalp, as you know, has sophisticated and varied presence of microorganisms who imbalance can alter its functioning and lead to hair disorders. It is very important to know the causes of microbial imbalance in the scalp in order to find the right cosmetic solution. Considering the fact that there is a link between alopecia and exposome, it is very important to evaluate the link between alopecia and scalp microbiota. Um, what is alopecia? You know that it is the most common form of permanent hair loss in most men and women 
with an, with an increasing prevalence with age. Prevalence in women is less. Developing an active ingredient work on the main wind beta catenin pathways, well known to regulate the air cycle growth, is very interesting. It seems that molecules such as polyphenols and terpenes have positive effects on air growth cellular pathways. In fact, polyphenols have been shown to enhance proliferation of human dermal papilla cells, to increase growth factors, concentration such as uh, EGF1 uh, and VEGF, and to reduce oxidative stress, resulting in an improved air growth. Lignans were also shown to exert air growth promoting effects by increasing wind beta catenin synaldic pathways in human dermal papilla cells. Terpens, such as linderan, were also able to inhibit the CAMP PK1 uh, Krebs pathway, whereas agents increasing CAMP levels were identified as potent inhibitors of human air follicle growth. These molecules can be found in some plants such as uh, Lindera strychnifolia roots. The plant is distributed in several Asian countries and is considered as a drug promoting longevity and as an elixir of life. Extract of roots are used as traditional medicine and recent studies reported antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. So uh, uh, this uh, extract containing this molecule uh, can slow hair loss can also give air vitality, air and density, and can also extend the air growth cycle. But what is the link between alopecia and macrobiota? First, it is important uh, to know uh, the, the, mac the macrobiota, the scalp macrobiota. Uh, the most abundant bacteria found in scalp uh, swab of healthy individuals are cutibacterium species. Uh, with the vast majority of Cutibacterium acnes and Staphylococcus, with a predominance of Staphylococcus epidemilis, compromising approximately 19% of the total gene sequences. Corinebacterium streptococcus, excuse me, acino, acin, acinobacter and Trevotella species are listing among other significantly less numero species. Among fungi, Malassezia species largely predominate in the scalp, Malassezia globosa and Malassezia restrictica being the most abundant species. Strongest evidence supporting correlation with macroorganisms colonizing the scalp has been found in seroboing dermatitis and in dandruff. It appears that fungi invasion and prevalence of cutibacterium acnes result in an increased air shedding. Nevertheless, nevertheless, the data are very scarce. So, uh, having characterized the scalp macrobiota uh, of healthy men and uh, men uh, having uh, alopecia, uh, some, some studies um, sh um, show uh, and evaluate the capacity of the extract Lindera Rus extract containing the molecule uh, as previous. As previous previously said, uh, restore a healthy bacterial and fungal scalp micro microflora after 80 days uh, of treatment. The strategy used was based on high through DNA sequencing targeting the encoding 16S ribosomal air in R for bacteria and ETS1 uh, for fungi. Uh, what is the result? St Stenotrophomonas geniculata were higher in the population having uh, alopecia, the species being the characterized by high keratinase activities and using air loss. At the same time, significant lower mean width of uh, S epidermidis and significant higher S acne were noted. The ratio between C acne and S epidermidis being higher in subject having alopecia compared to control subject. The increase in this ratio is in accordance with a few works on this topic. You have to know that C. acnes is able to synthesize many enzymes involved in the, metabolize, in the metabolism uh, of porphyrin that, once activated, they contribute to oxidation and follicular inflammation. 
virulence of the air follicle is noted to cause air loss as a consequence. The role of the epoxy conditions of the follicular region may be speculated in uh, alopecia scalp, and this may encourage C. acne overgrowth. Malassezia yeast, represented by different species, compose the macrobiota, as I said. These fungi, as you know, perhaps, are considered commensal members of the human skin microbiome, where they are predominantly represented by, M by Malassezia restrictia and Malassezia globosa. This study shows that uh, this active can rebalance scalp macrobiota linked to a uh, healthy scalp. So we uh, only show that some molecules and some terpenes can modify macrobiota and can modify uh, the cycle growth, so can induce, um, can have a, a, a good protection for alopecia, so for exposure. To summarize, exposome induces damage and peel of hair. Air grain that dehydrates hair and hair loss are also the, cons are also the consequences of exposome. Finally, scalp dysbiosis are present and can reinforce the deleterious effect of exposome. The main natural solution and through active ingredients that boost strength using a biomimetic lipid layer can uh, is very important. Intrasync air uh, defense system must be activated. And finally, the rebalance of mean fungi bacteria diversity must uh, taken uh, into account. To summarize uh, all this uh, webinar, uh, air exposome concepts and uh, skin uh, exposome uh, address uh, air disorder and address also um, skin disorder from an innovative perspective, analyzing the influences of air health and skin health holistically, so with a systemic approach, instead of treating signs of air damage independently and uh, as been the practice uh, is here too. Generally speaking, this concept aims to open new opportunities to develop dynamic and global solutions against the stresses to which the air and, and skin are subjected. Finally, the exposome conceptually and practically provides a holistic view of human health and diseases. When coupled with advice in genetics and medicine, the exposome will help to improve strategies aimed at preventing and prevention and preventing and treating diseases. Major research efforts are now focused on defining what is specifically the human exposure. And to conclude, we are very more than your genes. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you understand my English. Well, thank you very much, and thank you all for uh, your questions and your comments. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, we did get a number of questions in here uh, and we'll get to however many we can. Uh, we just have a few minutes. Um, but first of all, uh, the probably the biggest question people were asking was, can I get a copy of the slides? Yes, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, okay. no problem. Uh, we will, uh, we, 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 you can, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, send uh, this, uh, this power punch and yeah. um, uh, we can also, uh, we can also send uh, some articles uh, because uh, we uh, we have uh, we have wrote uh, a lot of uh, arti uh, articles on this topic. So okay. uh, if, uh, if some uh, people uh, want this article, it's possible. Yes, uh, and and we will so to everybody online. We will share uh, a, a link to the slides, and uh, uh, we'll share. Uh, we'll uh, either can contact you by email. Um, so this is a very interesting topic. It's um, sort of uh, futuristic in a way. It's an area that hasn't had a lot of study, at least in the cosmetic realm. Um, there are some claims you made about the effects of pollution on skin and hair. Uh, if somebody wanted to uh, find out what the latest information and science is about 
those kinds of effects, where might you suggest somebody look? Uh, is, is there books or papers that are related ah, to the um, effect of on hair and skin? Um, um, I- uh, currently, there, there is, uh, there is um, a lot of uh, studies concerning uh, the, the concept of exposome uh, in skin, but actually, but currently uh, also in air. Um, <coughs> uh, in Wintech, uh, we, um, we write uh, at this moment a publication uh, con- concerning uh, the relation uh, between uh, exposome and, and the hair. Uh, so um, I can, uh, when I finish uh, this publication, I can uh, I can uh, send uh, this publication. But uh, in Medline, uh, perhaps you, you you know what Medline is. Uh, there yeah. was some uh, there was some articles. Um, so and uh, the the article from Krutman Krutman uh, uh, he published uh, this uh, uh, um, his article in 1907 uh, in, in 1917 uh, um, and it is uh, the first the first article um, showing the relationship between uh, cosmetic and exposome. So it is a, a very good uh, very good article on this concept in cosmetics. A real quick question. Uh, what are the preservatives that are used in these ac- extracts? Okay. Would that be something you know? The quick, the quick. Ah, uh, what is the concept? Um, uh, um, I'm, no, no there, there is no, there is no preservative. There is no preservative in this, uh, in this active ingredients. Okay. Um, if uh, let's see, uh, one of the questions that came up was interesting. Uh, you, if you talk about blue light, uh, mm-hmm. what are some of the, uh, let's say the most serious effect of blue light that might have on skin what has been seen uh, um, uh, you know that uh, blue light, blue light uh, um, uh, it is uh, it is uh, it is uh, a concept uh, it is a very important concept because blue light can have a good effect uh, on, on skin but also uh, can have uh, some deleterious effects and uh, for, for example a lot of literature has, uh, um, uh, have shown that blue light has have the effect i said uh, they can produce um, blue light can produce a lot of uh, reactive oxygen spaces and uh, this reactive oxygen spaces will induce a cascade of uh, pro-inflammatory uh, cytokine and this pro-inflammatory cytokine uh, will after induce uh, some de- some deleterious effect on, on skin and uh, can uh, degrade uh, can have deleterious effect uh, on the surface of the skin. So um, you have to know that all the all the all the factors, uh, including in the exposome, have fast the same effect, the same uh, biological effect. And at least uh, uh, all this uh, all this uh, exposome and use premature premature aging. Interesting. Uh, one of the questions that came up uh, addresses an interesting point about cosmetics. Uh, cosmetics in general are not allowed to have drug effects, and yet some of the dis- uh, some of the descriptions of what was going on were were drugs. Uh, what would be the regular regulatory status of plant extracts like these? Huh. Um, uh, the the regular. Um, uh, I don't know if I if uh, I very good understand your patients, but okay. uh, you know that uh, in cosmetic um, uh, we have uh, we have to uh, to put uh, attention focus uh, on the shiny China uh, uh, list. Uh, but uh, I think it is uh, it is not uh, the your um, your questions. Uh, uh, I can only say that uh, uh, we, uh, concerning our active. Uh, it is not uh, drug-like, uh, so uh, it is uh, the, the, the very uh, important point. Uh, no, no active uh, have, uh, have a drug-like uh, mechanism. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's that's uh, good. Um, are, are there any types of side effects that people should be worried about uh, when using ingredients like these? Uh, uh, it is very complicated because uh, in cosmetic, um, uh, the the cosmetic uh, uh, 
uh, theoretically is not a, is not a medication. So uh, a cosmetic cannot uh, have the same mechanism uh, uh, as compared to a medication. But at the same time, um, the, the customers want uh, some active ingredients, some natural active ingredients, uh, which have a biological mechanism. So uh, to have some biological mechanism, <laughs> it is important that the, that the active um, target some biological mechanism. So the frontier, the, the frontier, the, 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 the limit uh, is very, uh, is very, uh, is very uh, light, uh, small. <laughs> oh yes, yes. Uh, you, you understand? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, thanks. Uh, we just have time for a couple of more questions. Uh, you're doing great, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and uh, I have to say, people uh, really liked your slides, and uh, so people really want to get copies of that. Uh, one of the things that I uh, was very curious about is you've you've screened a lot of ingredients, presumably. Uh, how do you go about identifying ingredients that might have some positive impact uh, on uh, this? Ah, um, you you asked me uh, how we uh, how we do uh, for to to, uh, to, uh, to 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 screen. Uh, so uh, we uh, firstly we we do a lot of uh, of um, uh, literature, uh, and then uh, we focused uh, on uh, on the on biological mechanism, uh, and then uh, we target uh, some uh, some molecules. Uh, included uh, in uh, in plants uh, or in algae or in microorganisms because uh, in green tech we can uh, we are we have the chance to have a lot of uh, material uh, raw we can uh, we can uh, screening uh, we can do some uh, uh, some screening uh, with uh, plants with algae and uh, with microorganisms and then we do a lot of uh, transcriptional uh, transcriptomic um, uh, evaluation and uh, we also do some uh, in vitro test uh, some uh, ex vivo test and some uh, in vivo test and after that we can uh, we can put the the cosmetic allegation um as far as uh claim support or consumer support uh what kind of testing would you do in a salon or with consumers uh to address some of the claims that are made um, uh, we can. Uh, it depends. Uh, it, it depends of the, the allegation. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, we can, uh, for example, uh, uh, evaluate uh, uh, some uh, specific uh, signaling pathways uh, in uh, in vitro uh, in vitro cells. Uh, we can uh, in uh, in vitro study. Uh, we can uh, we can work specifically uh, uh, on melanocyte cells or in keratinocyte cells. Uh, and uh, and uh, we can uh, evaluate the specific effect of uh, our extract on some uh, on some mechanism, and uh, after that uh, we can uh, do some specific uh, evaluation co culture uh, with the keratinocyte and, fibro and fibroblasts, for example, uh, or we can do uh, we can do uh, some uh, ex plant uh, uh, ex vivo studies. Uh, so we do. A transcriptional, uh, we have a transcriptional approach. It is a transcriptional approach, a translational approach, uh, because mm -hmm. we can do in uh, in tubo, in uh, in in uh, in vitro and ex vivo and vivo test. So uh, in medicine, it names translational approach. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I think we have time for maybe just one more question. Uh, but thank you so much for your time. This has been a very uh, interesting, uh, interesting talk, and uh, a, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of, has generated a lot of comments here in the chat. It's, it's hard for me to keep up with them all. Um, there were some questions about formulating. I know you didn't want to really address specific formulation questions, but uh, there, there is one one question I would like to, to see if you have any thoughts on. Um, as far as a sensorial effect, when you're using a, a, an extract like this, uh, do you expect any kind of immediate sensorial effects uh, that that you might see in the formula, or is are these things that m are more effective over time? Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, um, if um, 
could you repeat the, could you repeat the, the question please uh so if you take the ingredient and you put it on your skin yes is there some sort of immediate effect that you might notice ah uh, 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 you, you know um, uh, if i understand good the questions uh, you speak about the perception and uh, you, you you're right uh, if um, uh, as i said uh, in my colleagues um, if i take care of me uh, if i take care of me uh, i will uh, i will uh, induce a good uh, good emotion and uh, and uh, then uh, i can uh, i can have a good feeling uh, of this cosmetic so the the french wear the balance uh, between the the real effect uh, of uh, of the cosmetic and uh, and uh, the the brain active and the brain effect is uh, very special but uh, you have to know and uh, it is a specific topic uh, in in green tech uh, you have to know that uh, the psychobiology is a is a real science and uh, if you uh, if you uh, choose uh, the good the good uh, instruments the good evaluation uh, the good psychology test or if you uh, so uh, you can uh, really uh, demonstrate that your active have uh, a specific effect on mood uh, and it and it is not only the perception you you understand so yeah, yeah. Uh, when when uh, when uh, when in green tech for example uh, we uh, we say that we have a psychological approach uh, it is very important because um, we 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 have we do uh, we um, take uh, scientific uh, measurements uh, and this uh, this uh, evaluation is uh, like uh, uh, like in psychology uh, so it is not a test uh, in the table uh, it is it is a, a, a real scientific measure so yeah. we can define we can define uh, we can uh, discriminate uh, the perception uh, of the subject with the evaluation, uh, with the effect uh, of our active on the mood, for example. And uh, for example, uh, we have uh, we have uh, an active, uh, we have two actives uh, concerning the, this topic uh, and the the, um, the balance between psychological effect and biological effect. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, great job. I'm Perry Romanowski. I'm from the IFSCC Education Committee. Thank you all for attending. I think at one point we had, uh, you know, almost 350 people online at once. Uh, I apologize for any sort of technical glitch. Uh, it's kind of related to the, the Wi-Fi signal and the, uh, the internet signal that you get at your place, but we are recording this and hopefully the recording looks good. So we'll have a replay. Okay. We'll uh, share with you how to get the slides so you can have that. And of course, contact information for Dr. Filar uh, and to, to get more information. Thanks uh, again, we're good. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Two minutes, uh, thank you very much. But um, uh, for, for the uh, PowerPoint, uh, I think it is not the, the last version. Uh, so, uh, uh, I will send you the good, the good, uh, the final uh, presentation. Oh, oh. Sure, uh, sure, sure. So, uh, it's it's better for all the people. So thank you yeah. very much for for all of, for your attention. Abs thank you. Absolutely. Uh, we're gonna have our next webinar in two weeks, uh, featuring yours truly, uh, and we're gonna just do a basic uh, cosmetic formulation: how to create a cosmetic formula from start to finish to launch. And so look forward to that. We will see you in two weeks. Thanks again, everybody, and we are out. Thank you, bye. Thank you very much. Hello, and welcome to another IFSCC webinar. I am the education chair, Perry Romanowski, and with me today, we have Dr. Edith Filar. She will be giving our presentation um, at the top of the hour, uh, but, we just like to welcome people as you come on. Uh, Edith, we've already got uh, nine people already are online. Um, and uh, let me just tell you, welcome. It, when you when you come online, let us. Why don't you let us know uh, who you are, your name, and where you're from? We always like to find out where in the world 
people are from. Uh, I am located in Chicago, uh, in the United States. Uh, where are you located? Uh, I'm, um, I'm in Clermont-Ferrand, uh, in French, uh, ah. near Lyon, uh, near Paris, okay. uh, at, the, at the middle uh, uh, of the French. Is it near the Dijon area that's north? Uh, um, 300 kilometers. Okay. <laughs> I spent some time in that. Uh, I went on a vacation one time. It's a fabulous, fabulous part. Look, we, we've, got, we've got 68 people already online. Uh, do you know how many people uh, had signed up for this webinar? No, I don't know that. We came in at just about 900 people. So, 900 people? Oh. Yeah. So, I have a lot of you, you have a, you have a lot of fans and Thank welcome you. we've got 70 people already online welcome uh why don't if you if you come online why don't you type in the chat uh let us know where you are from and just to say hello i always like to find out and we got a first one uh karen hello karen uh and welcome and of course we have mary lynn mary lynn is located in new york hello mary lynn um we got uh Ish Ishani from Nepal. All right, Nepal. Um, we've got Robert, uh, all the way from Sydney, Australia. Sydney, Australia. Look at we we are global and worldwide. This is an exciting topic. Hello, Alberto from Brazil. So we got. Uh, let's see, we got Australia, United States, and South America coming in, uh, and we got Anne from Chicago. Well, welcome. I'm from Chicago too. Elo from. Milan, Italy. Uh, welcome, welcome on, on board here. Um, and uh, we got someone from Venezuela, Attilo. We've got uh, uh, Ulina from New Jersey. Um, welcome, welcome everybody. We've got somebody from Mexico, Jamie from Brazil. Uh, it looks like you're, you've got a lot of fans in South America out there. So. <laughs> well, welcome everybody coming online. And we're going to get started at the top of the hour. So that's just in 10 minutes. Uh, if you, when you do come on, uh, we're going to have this talk. And during the talk, if you have questions, feel free to post your questions in, in the chat. I'll, I'll be monitoring them. And at the end of the talk, uh, if there's time for a couple of questions, we will, uh, we will get those answered. Now I want to tell you, um, uh, when we're doing questions, we might we might be shorted shorted questions here. But if uh, you have a question, feel free to type it in there. And if we have a way to uh, to contact you, so with your email, um, actually we we will have your email. So if you post a question and it doesn't get answered live here, we will be able to send those uh, to Dr. Uh, Filar, and she will be able to answer those uh, via email if they're not answered live here today. Okay, uh, yeah, when you when you come on here, we've got, uh, oh, Michelle from Los Angeles. Los Angeles, that would be was six, six in, 6.50 in the morning, so that's that's early, welcome. I wonder how late it is in Australia right now. That, that, was, that must be late, right? <laughs> there, well, yeah, you add, you add 13 hours to where I am now or something. I don't know, I went there, I was, uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't exactly know uh, the time all the time, but. Um, Welcome from uh, welcome to everybody, uh, Teresa from Barcelona. Well, that's right near your guys. Um, well, well, since we have a few minutes, uh, uh, Edith, why don't you tell us a little bit about how did you get involved in the cosmetic industry? Since we have a, uh, Dr. Falar, since we have a few minutes, uh, can you tell us how did you get involved in the cosmetic industry? Oh, um, before um, before I work uh, for Wintech, uh, I was uh, at the university um, near Paris um, in Orléans, and uh, I worked for this university uh, since um, um, 12, 12 years, and uh, after that. Um, I um, I will be. Uh, um, I was. Uh, I work uh, in WinTech now uh, since two years, and um, it, um, it 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 it's a little modi uh, There is uh, some modification uh, between uh, between the university and uh, the industry, uh, but uh, both are, both are very uh, interesting. 
Yeah. And your background was in uh, biology or nutrition? Um, uh, my, uh, my first topic is uh, physiology, not, not biology and nutrition, uh, only physiology, for only <laughs> physiology, uh, sports physiology. And uh, after that, um, I uh, did a lot of work uh, concerning the nutrition. Uh, nutrition uh, for uh, athletes and uh, for the top level of uh, of athletes and uh, after that um, I worked um, in nutrition but uh, for um, for health and uh, in relation uh, in relation to cancer to like cancer interesting and, yeah. I'm I'm curious what type of athletes did you work with huh. um, um, I worked for, with um, with tennis with tennis players uh, with tennis players, uh, with uh, with riders, um, uh, in uh, in uh, do, do you know um, 24 heures du Mans? Do you, do you know? Hmm, I'm not 24, so sure. 24 hours um, Le Mans. Uh, okay. It is, uh, it is a famous uh, a famous competition in uh, uh, so, um, and uh, I also work uh, with uh, with uh, judo uh, with uh, wrestler with a uh, wrestler. Okay. Uh, um, for for um, problematic of nutrition and of weight uh, to 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 reduce the weight uh, before the competition. Interesting. And, um, voilà. <laughs> you know, I uh, I'm a runner. Oh, I, okay. I I do the marathon. I did the marathon in in Paris in 2012, I think. Okay. It's and, uh, um, What was your your um, your time? Uh, three hours and fifty-five minutes. Fifty-five oh. minutes. Hmm. Um, I I did uh, the marathon of Amsterdam. Oh, okay. Yes. And how did you do? <laughs> uh, fast uh, like you. Ah. Uh, <laughs> um, three uh, um, three hours and uh, fifth and um, how many count? Uh, 40. And forty minutes. 40 oh, minutes. nice, nice. My my best I've done a few. My best one was three hours and twenty one minutes. Wow! So sorry, very but good. Very it's good. a nice hobby. I'm not good at the nutrition though. I eat too many candy bars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let me just tell everybody. Welcome to everybody new coming on. Uh, right now, we've got one hundred and thirty seven people have joined us. We've got Kathy from Texas, Michelle from Cape Town. Linda from the Philippines, Sylvia, uh, Sylvia, we don't know where Sylvia's from. <laughs> uh, we got Nuria from the United Kingdom. That's a lot of countries that we have so far. Uh, welcome everybody. Um, uh, now your uh, your first language is uh, is 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 French, I, I gather. Yes, yes. <laughs> My only language is French. Yes. Uh, well, you're doing a, you're doing a good job uh, you, so far. So, <laughs> you know, I was once on a I do I do not speak much French. I I took it in high school, but I was once on a train from Italy to mm -hmm. Paris, so Rome to Paris overnight, and I was in a car with uh, people who only spoke French. <laughs> but somehow, uh, me and this other gentleman had an entire conversation for about an hour, and I think it was in French, but I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. I think I understood what he was saying. <laughs> so the I, languages are kind of close, but not really. I think I, I will speak in English, but uh, I, don't, I don't show. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a good job so far. We are going to get started in just four minutes. Four minutes. Welcome. Um, I'm going to take a little uh, sip of my hot tea. Make sure uh, the voice works. Yes, for me too. How are things? How are things in uh, in France right now? Are the restaurants open and such? Yes. Uh, the restaurant is open, and um, the cinema is open. Um, is open now. Uh, cinema. Movies, movies. Oh, oh, really? Okay. Yes, and uh, but not theater, not theater. In uh, in Chicago, um, the restaurants are supposed to open uh, this weekend. Okay, okay. But, but people, uh, yes. people are still wearing masks, you know. Yeah. In French, it depends. Some uh, some person have, have the mask and uh, mm -hmm. some. Uh, 
I just avoid people. So <laughs> I'm, I'm at home a lot. <laughs> okay, welcome to everybody new coming on. We've got 180 people online right now. Uh, we're gonna, we are gonna get started in three minutes. Um, I'm Perry Romanowski. I'm part of the IFSCC Education uh, Committee. And we have been doing uh, webinars for the last few months. Uh, this is actually our fifth webinar in the series. If you uh, are curious about past webinars, you can go to our website, ifscc.org, and under the education tab, you can go through and look and, and see our past webinars. We had a webinar uh, on a wide range of things, formulating with silicon, uh, uh, sunscreens. We had another one on peptides and something on the skin and the microbiome and very interesting stuff. And I'm really interested about today's talk. Uh, it was the exosome. Um, and uh, this is just a whole area of uh, a, a whole area of cosmetic chemistry and science that uh, I don't know very much about. So I'm very excited about this. Um, oh, look at that. We're up to 200 people are online. Welcome, everybody new. We've got uh, Carla from Sao Paulo, Brazil, a place I'd love to go. Have you been to Brazil? Have you been to Brazil or in South no. America already? Yes, yes, yes. Um, because uh, in green tech we have uh, we have also um, a fabric, um, a factory uh, in Sao Paulo uh, named ah. Matrix. Yes. Ah, excellent. And did I hear correctly that you are going to be coming to the United States in December? Ten schedule yeah, or you're right? You're right. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. In New York. Yes. Excellent. Uh, excellent. Well, I'm tentatively scheduled to uh yes i hope so too i'm tentatively scheduled to go so we'll see uh it's amazing how many shows have been canceled or postponed this year this uh is really uh different times for us oh, all right well we're just one minute away do you feel the excitement <laughs> i'm very excited yes <laughs> okay. well <laughs> let me uh, let me get uh, an introduction to you, and then we'll start up the slides. And just uh, for everybody new joining, welcome. Um, if you have questions during the presentation, feel free to post them in in the uh, the comments at the end of the presentation. There there may be some time for some questions. We'll we'll answer which questions we can. Um, there there may be a little language barrier here, so it might be more. Uh, uh, efficient uh, if we send the questions uh, directly and you communicate through email, but we will answer what we can uh, and thank you. Okay, there's the top of the hour. I like to be really timely, so why don't we get started here?